Hi, today we're going to be reviewing digital radiography procedure. And the first thing we will start with, as we usually do, is as per clinic policy, we're going to barrier and we are going to um, pre clean and disinfect all the surfaces in the operatory. But for this procedure, we are also going to pre clean the counter here as well. So for that, we're going to use the Birex 4x4 gauze, certainly your utility gloves. And now we're going to turn on the x-ray unit and come right around and check that it is working properly. And it is. Now we're going to get our tray from the digital um, x-ray cabinet. Okay, this is the digital supply cabinet and I'm going to open it. I have removed my utility gloves, washed my hands, I've put on patient gloves and over gloves and these are already disinfected before they're put away. So the tray has been disinfected as well as the sensor itself. We're going to take this over and put it on the operatory counter which by now it should be dry. So we've seated the tray. We don't want to be close to the um, sink so we don't get any overspray. Um, and then leaving a place for the computer, which will go here, um, we're all set. Now we're going to go into the prep room. I want you to notice that I do have my mask down, and I will have it down for the duration of this video because I want you to really be able to hear me. Um, but normally it would be up over my nose and my mouth. So this is the cabinet where we store all of our disinfected trays, and we're going to remove one of them place a paper towel on it. We're going to dispense a sensor cover and also a full mouth series of x-rays from the drawer. Okay. Next, we're going to um, dispense our digital bite blocks. Um, and so for this, we're going to use the forceps and place them on the tray. This is a little like a beam. <laughs> you might recognize. You get 10 extra points at the end of the semester if you can do this in 30 seconds or less. Just kidding. Okay, I'm going to remove my overgloves. And we're going to set up the XCP and So I'm going to put aside the ones that we would normally use for film. So we want to look and make sure that we just see the bite block through the ring. And notice that the colors are a little bit unmatching, so you have to remember that anterior is a step up. Actually, let's leave this on for a little while. And now we're going to do the posterior. And now the bite wing. So again, you're not going to see matching colors, so you have to do it by remembering what bite block goes with what rod and ring. Okay. Notice that I have your um, grade sheets here, the yellow one for digital, and also your effectiveness of valve form. These should both be on the chair so that um, I can be critiquing what you're doing as we go along. So it's really helpful to have your name, the date, um, the instructor, and um, the clinic number on the top of these sheets. Thank you. So next we're going to need our computer. 
So we'll find that in the cabinet in the operatory on the second shelf. Um, first, we're going to take out this skid-proof pad so that it doesn't slip off the counter. And very carefully with two hands, we're going to take out the computer. We will also need the internet cord and the electrical cord, which I think you can see we store as well in this cabinet. We're also going to dispense the barrier for the computer. And we will want to plug in the internet cord on the back right side of the computer. And then also into the wall outlet. It just looks neater if we tuck that away. And we need the electrical cord with hiding from me. Please notice how it's wrapped so that when we put it away, it is always put back the same way. And you can either leave it wrapped up mostly and just tuck it behind the monitor with just enough to connect it in the back left side of the computer. So now we're going to um, plug in the sensor on the side of the computer. Okay. And put this back here. Then we're going to open the computer. And I want to talk to you about how we're going to barrier. Um, we do want to use barrier tape. I've dispensed already and put it over the keypad covering control alt and delete for sure the sticky side down and then we're going to take this cover and it's basically a big bag we will open it and put it over the monitor itself and the reason that we have decided to do it this way is because we're concerned about heat building up, which is not good for the computer. But we do want to make sure that aerosols are not an issue either. <clears throat> just like so. And the next thing we want to do is turn on the computer, and that key button is up here in the upper right-hand side. While we're waiting for the computer to come up, you can go on um, barrier the sensor as well. So your barrier should be on the tray. Okay, so with clean gloves on, we're going to take the barrier cover and remember that it's very important to be so careful with this very expensive piece of equipment. Um, we're going to slide it gently without pushing on the cord or pulling in any way. We're just gently pushing the back of the sensor up until the tip to the tapered part of the sensor cover until it's in nice and snug. Just like that. And once again, I just want to remind you that we always disinfect this um, before putting it away so we know that it's nice and clean when we take it out and don't have to do so. It'll save us some time with the setup. And notice that we're keeping it contained on the tray as well. Right, now we're going to press Control Delete. And when it asks for your password, you're going to put in capital F-R-A-N-K-F-O-R-T-1-0-7. And then we're just going to use our mouse. <clears throat> okay, now we want to scroll over to Practice Web and click on that icon.
Okay, and now we're going to go up to student and click on that. And we don't need a password here, we're just going to hit OK. And I want you to remember that we always want to have the sensor plugged in before we actually go into our software um, icon, which is Sofro. So now we're going to go over to Chart here on the left, halfway down, click on that, and now we'll go up here to SoPro. So the question I guess you want to ask yourself before you hit SoPro is, do I have my sensor put in? So now you want to find your patient's name. We're going to use my name, Corby. Now, if you are in lab, your instructor will tell you how to enter your patient's name as a new patient. In clinic, the um, name will already have been entered at the reception area. So we're going to double click on that. Now, if we want a new uh, set of x-rays, you can see all the ones that have been taken prior to this. Um, if you click here, this is where you're going to get the different mounts that you may use. And right here, the highlighted one, is the full mount series that we have um, most use for. So I'm going to make sure that that's highlighted and hit OK. Now I want you to also notice this area. Um, in that, the light is green and flashing. That means that it's on, the sensor's working, and that it is ready to go. Um, you might also notice that this central incisor area is highlighted, so whatever is highlighted is what is going to be um, the placement of the exposure that you take. So you always want to make sure that the, the film that you want to be taking is what is highlighted. You'll also notice up here woman's face and there are four areas that can be highlighted. Right now it's on the, the nose, the maxillary anteriors, down here on the chin would be lower anteriors. This would be anything on the patient's right and anything on the patient's left would be this, any exposures. So we are in the right place but if you wanted to change it you just tap with your mouse once and it will go to that area. So as you move around the mouth, you're going to need to remember to do that and always check that this light is green with yellow flashing so that you're not making an exposure where radiation is produced on the patient and yet nothing would be um, saved on your mount. So now you can see that I've seated the patient. Um, I've put his chart here so that I can record any medical dental history information. Um, this is a, this drop down desk is just perfect for that. So please do use it. Um, we will be documenting as we go along with the patient. Um, we would check as soon as he's seated um, for his eligibility and ask for a prescription um, as per the dentist what it is they would he would like us to take on the patient, whether it be a full mouth series or a periapical or bite wings, um, then we would um, introduce the instructor, ask her to come in and go over everything that you have done, and then it'll be time to take x-rays. So we need to do that very important thing, which is to put on the lead apron. We can touch the lead apron with our hands, clean hands because it is disinfected. It is one of the things that we disinfect. You always want to be thinking about whether you should be having over gloves or patient gloves um, to touch a certain surface so that we don't cross-contaminate. Now we are going to put on our 
patient gloves with clean hands. And you will see that the XCPs have been put together and are waiting for our use. And now we need to calibrate the unit for our patient. So we're checking to make sure that it is on digital exposure, and it is. We're going to start with the maxillary incisors, in this case if we're taking a full mouth series, which we're, we are, and um, we can see that it's all functional. Also, Dexter is a, an adult male, so we have the light next to the adult, and we are good to go. Now I'm going to attach the sensor onto the XCP and bite block. So I'm taking peeling off the protective coat cover, and if you notice, I'm putting my thumb on the bottom of the sensor, and I'm going to sit the bottom of the bite block right on that bottom line of the sensor, okay? And that way, the bottom line and the bottom of the sensor are flush. And I'm going to bring the cord over usually around the patient's shoulder is good. We want to make sure that we never kink this cord because it would damage the sensor. And we're going to be taking that maxillary incisor exposure. So I'm placing it in the patient's mouth. Notice that we're not using a cotton roll for this. And we're centering it, tipping it slightly toward the palatal. I'm going to bring the ring gently up to his face. <clears throat> and I will align the PID and the rod, making sure that they are parallel. And then I'm going to hold here and here, bring it right up over the ring, checking to see that the space here is even as it is, which would be our vertical angulation, and we're good to go. I'm noticing that the green light and yellow are operating. I've highlighted, and I'm going to push the button. So now you can see that the um, film has been populated into the area that we had highlighted. Now we are going to go over to the upper right canine and we would continue around the anteriors doing the same thing. So I'm going to now highlight the lower anterior. So let's suppose we've taken the three maxillary anteriors. We use the same XCP instrument I am going to recalibrate. So I've recalibrated to the lower anteriors. We want to make sure that the patient is not biting on the cord. We're now doing the lower central incisors. pushing the arms apart so it's easier to work. I'm getting the rod and the PID parallel. I'm checking that the space is even. And now I'm going to bring it over the ring by holding the stem and the yoke. Nice and parallel. And now I am going to push the button. a very nice lower incisor exposure. Now let's pretend that we have taken all the three of the lower anteriors. <clears throat> and the next one that we would go to would be the upper right premolar area. So I'm going to remove the anterior, gently peeling away not pulling on the sensor. Now that we want to do the maxillary premolar, um, we will want to make sure that we highlight the upper right maxillary premolar. And we're going to change 
to the right side up here so that it will populate the area that we anticipate taking. Notice that I have the sensor carefully resting in my hand. If you've ever had a film fall out of a film holder, this could also happen to the sensor. And if it were to fall on the floor, that would be a really expensive mistake. So we want to make sure that when we transfer it, we always have our hand on underneath it. So I'm going to align the white line of the sensor onto the maxillary canine. Parallel to the long axis of the tooth. My the idea is right here. This is also going to reduce the number of steps you have to take, which day after day adds up. Okay, and I'm ready to push the button. Checking calibration. Yes, clear. Okay. And you'll see that we have a nice exposure. Now I would proceed to the upper right molar as well. And you'll see that it has advanced to that spot. After that, we would take the lower left premolar. And when we do that, we would also make sure that we check that that side of the patient's face is highlighted. Okay. Um, when you get to the upper left, following the lower left molar, we would go to the upper, and I lost my, there we go. Um, we would go to the upper left premolar. What do we have to do? We have to switch our XCPs. So again, carefully and over the tray, we're going to peel away and we know that we want to have the cord orientation coming out of the mouth, directly out of the mouth. We don't want it to go and grab the tonsils. And we're going to switch our XCP for the upper left and the lower right. Okay. You should be getting very good at this. Again, I'm resting my thumb on the bottom of the sensor and centering it left and right so that the bottom of the sensor is flush with the bottom of the bite block. I would check my calibration and make sure that it's on the premolar again, and then I would proceed. And then the last we would be doing the bite wings, and I'll do one of those for you as well. I'm going to highlight the right premolar bite wing. I would go out and change the calibration to bite wing. And then I would do that before that I put it in the patient's mouth. And then we're going to center the bite block on the white lined area of the sensor. Okay. <clears throat> So I'm doing the right side, so I again want to remember to go up here with my flashing lights and click on the right side of the patient. So notice I was holding this over the patient so it's not going to fall on the floor. Okay, I see that the lower Canine is the one that's most anterior, so I'm going to try and get as much of the sensor anterior as I can with the white line on the canine. If you find that the tube head is fighting you, you might want to flip it, and it should be more cooperative. And we're ready to go take the x-ray. 
clear. Okay, so here we have our bite wing and we would then go ahead and take the molar. So we would have to make sure that sometimes it jumps ahead. Okay, so say we did not like something about this film and we needed to do a retake of it. What we would do, normally this would be highlighted over here once that's taken. So what we do is just go right back to here. Once you get an approval from your instructor to do the retake, um, you could then just retake it again and it would be, the first one would be stored so that you could see it and evaluate it if you wanted to. It never goes away completely. But then this one hopefully is an improvement and you can keep that as part of your final full mount series um, or determine which one you want to keep and choose one or the other. So that's how we do retakes. We usually do retakes once we take the full mount series and determine if it is in one film versus another, then it's acceptable in a full mount series. Um, so we wouldn't retake it and re-expose the patient. Okay, so say we've proceeded around and we would then dismiss the patient once we have done our retakes with the instructor's approval. Carefully take this out of the mouth. Thank you, Dexter, you were wonderful. And now we would dismiss the patient and I'd like to show you how we will save the information that we have just taken. Um, you want to go up to File and Quit. Okay, and then we go over to the X and we're going to again hit Quit and you're out of the program. Now, our system automatically saves um, the x-rays that we've taken, but a very important note, we want to be sure that when you're in an office, you understand the protocol for their um, system of saving x-rays. Most do not and require you to hit a backup button, so um, just be aware of that but here we will not be doing that because we have an automatic backup. At this time, you would just turn this program off if you're not using it for another patient. We're going to go to this little drop-down box, go to shut down, and it will shut down like any other program. Just an important word to make sure that it is totally off before you store it in the cabinet. Bring your tray without touching the computer with your clinic gloves. We're going to take this over to the counter here and we can also break this down. These are disposable bite blocks and they're a little bit hard to get off. So it's a rock and roll kind of thing until you get it off completely. go and one more okay now these we would autoclave we would throw out the three digital bite blocks and return all of these pieces to the prep room so that we can prepare them for bagging and autoclaving so we would put them in the ultrasonic for 10 minutes after we rinse them ultrasonic them rinse them again, pat them dry with paper towels, and then we would bag them appropriately and put them in the tray to go to um, sterilization. I've dismissed my patient, um, removed of course the lead apron before he was dismissed, and I've also put the, ex the tube head against the wall and pointing down and against the cushion. So now that my SCPs are in the prep room, we have one more very important thing to do using Pavicide wipes, and that's the only thing we use on our digital sensor and on the tray. What I like to do is start with the tray, and 
Wait. And then I will wipe the whole sensor. So you want to keep this nice and loose. And we're going to wipe the sensor now that we've wiped the lid. And you want to make sure that it's not going to kink against each other so that it doesn't ruin the functionality of the sensor. Make sure that you're in a position where it's not going to hit against the counter or the floor, certainly. this as well. Now we're going to use a new, that was just the pre-cleaning, we're going to use another wipe, and that was so much fun, we're going to do it again. When I took the sensor cover off, I did not pull it off by the cord and your instructor will show you how to do that when you're in lab. Um, you only want to very gently ease it out. Okay. I'm gonna place this on the clean tray and disinfect this one as well. And then we're going to just set these aside and let them dry as we finish our other duties in the prep room. And then you would remove your gloves, wash your hands, ready to take off our gloves and disinfect them while that's drying. And we're going to put the computer away, restore it if it's not being used for another patient. So I've washed my gloves and disinfected them. I have washed my hands. Just putting on over gloves now, and I am going to disconnect the computer in the back gently. And again, checking that the blue lights are all gone so I can close this up. And we're going to put them all back up on here, the second shelf. I'm going to put this on top so we have it for our next time. I'm going to unplug the electrical cord, wrapping it neatly. And securing it. And the little blue light that is on the end will also fade out. Now, when we disinfect the operatory, we are going to use this, um, disinfect this as well as the counter. These are what I kept my um, over gloves on, so you want to remember to do that. And we also will unplug this and put it away. Okay. There we go. Now we would break down the operatory um, in the same way that we did set it up. Thank you for your attention, and um, I will be seeing you in lab.